irrespective if you tour with your motorcycle all over, burn rubber on weekends with mates, or backpack through Southeast Asia on a rental scooter. Motorcycle security is a concern. In this video I will give you multiple tips to help secure your iron stallion. Hello wonderful person, I am Anton and I make travel related videos as well as occasional do it yourself videos that are mostly travel or motorcycle related. If you are not subscribed yet then please do so. If you find this video informative or helpful in any way then please let me and YouTube know by liking and sharing it. Follow the link in the description to my website for books I've written on subjects from travel to scuba diving and narcissistic abuse. There are only two ways you can 100% avoid reporting your motorcycle is stolen to the cops. One is to hire a full time deterrent, but unless you own a small country that may not be practical for you. Second is to cry your heart out and sell your motorcycle, but that will leave you miserable and life may not even be worth getting out of bed for anymore. You can also try to ride a vintage motorcycle that people may not want to steal, or you can make your motorcycle invisible. I mean look at that view, no one is going to notice your motorcycle with those waves. Following are some more options. First, get a motorcycle cover and park your motorcycle in a secure place out of sight and as close to your bedroom window as possible. If thieves do not know there is a motorcycle or what type it is, they are less likely to enter a place to steal it. A cover also deters thieves slightly because it is an extra step for them to take it off as well as they cannot see if there are any locks on the motorcycle. You want to be able to hear any noise or alarm while sleeping, so no use parking your motorcycle miles away. Speaking of locks, a good way to stop thieves from pushing your bike away is disc locks. However, ditch a standard disc lock. They are useless as they are vulnerable to attacks from an easy out. All the thief needs to do is insert an easy out into the part where the lock bends and screw the easy out in and the lock splits open. Even those with alarms break open without going off. The larger shackle locks are more robust, but they are expensive and vulnerable to brute force attacks from a hammer as all shackle locks are. A better option is the sliding pin lock. It is a lot cheaper than both the other locks and also more secure. It is not as vulnerable to either easy out or brute force hammer attacks. It resists sawing on the pin well as the pin keeps spinning around. It is also easy to come by and a visible deterrent for thieves. Steering locks are useless as thieves often break them in seconds to a few minutes for top end models. Never ever only rely on a steering lock. You can also use a shackle lock on the back through the chain and sprocket. However, it is vulnerable to brute force attacks and get dirty from the chain oil or wax. Another option is to run a chain through the back wheel and chain the motorcycle to something. This will help that thieves cannot easily pick the motorcycle up and carry it away. Even just a chain through the back wheel will make it hard to push the motorcycle away. A nice cheap deterrent is to install a flashing light emitting diet. This modification can easily be removed and installed in rental motorcycles. You will need to get a high intensity flashing LED, an 820 ohm resistor and some wire and fittings from an electronic store. An optional extra is a small push on and off micro switch. Connect the LED to the motorcycle's battery as shown in the diagram. This will make it look as if the motorcycle has an alarm or immobilizer on. The switch can be used to deactivate the LED while you're riding, especially at night. If you have a motorcycle cover, the light often flashes through, deterring thieves as they think the alarm may go off while they are still busy removing the cover. A step up from a false alarm light is to install an actual cheap alarm. This alarm works by activating your motorcycle horn when the motorcycle is leaned upright. In the video I have a full alarm installed, but it works on the same principle. You can add it to a false LED system and use the same micro switch to power both units. You will need a mercury switch and a 12 volt 10 amp relay additionally. The image of a diet is actually for later in the video when I will show you how to modify a car alarm. The mercury switch is the trip in the system. I installed mine in a small plastic box I got from an electronic store and then filled it with glue gun plastic. I filed the bottom skew so that when the bike is upright the mercury makes contact with the connections in the tube. The switch needs to be a bit over level to activate. Note that the switch cannot pull the amps your motorcycle horn draws so you need a relay. The micro switch is to cut the power to the mercury switch so that when you are riding on your motorcycle the horn does not blow all the time. Power goes from the battery through the micro switch and then to the mercury switch. 
When the Mercury switch is tripped by riding the motorcycle, the power then goes through the Mercury switch and powers the relay. The contacts of the relay then gives direct power to the horn. This will give any thief a fright. The aim here is to track attention that someone is busy with a motorcycle and possibly wake you up if you are sleeping. The drawback with the system is that the horn only blows while the motorcycle is upright. To let the horn continue to sound you can get a self-energizing relay but once it is activated it stays closed. So the horn will keep hooting until you cut the power with a micro switch. You can install a car flasher unit in line after the relay. Get the small 2 pole 10 amp ones. This will cause the horn to pulse instead of a steady tone. If you want you can get a small timer from an electronic store to auto cut the power to the relay in one minute. But that is more work and almost the same price as the next option, a full alarm system. You will need to find the positive power to the horn. Use a voltmeter and check for earth with a continuity setting. Then check the other wire that it gets power when the ignition is on and you hit the horn button. You want to connect your alarm wire from the relay to that positive wire. Use a double connection fitting so that you do not have to cut the original horn wire. If you do not have a voltmeter you can use one of your indicator bulbs and twist the wire around the metal part. Put that wire's other end inside the connector plug of the wire you want to test and the back of the bulb against the chassis of a the motorcycle then hit the horn button. If you have power the bulb will light up. Pictured here is how I fastened the mercury switch box to the motorcycle frame. Hold it down and then test the angle by righting the motorcycle. Then file the bottom skew until the mercury switch closes when the motorcycle is upright. Use the continuity setting on a voltmeter to see if you have a closed switch when testing. The next option is to install a full alarm. However, motorcycle alarms are scarce and expensive. A better option is to modify a car alarm. Look for ones that have a shock sensor in. Mine even trips if I fiddle with a disc lock or try to remove a motorcycle cover. Motorcycle alarms work by activating when a car door is opened by using the interior light switch found on doors. The mercury switch will serve as a switch instead of a car door light switch. So when someone rides your motorcycle by lifting it off a side stand, the mercury switch will trip the car alarm. Before you buy the car alarm, check the schematics that the trip wire needs to be connected to the door switch that is connected to earth, thus grounding this wire trips the alarm. The car alarm will have a feed wire that will power your indicators. However, this wire cannot power your indicators by itself. It powers the hazard relay that in turn flashes all your indicator lights. Seek the positive wire on your hazard relay and connect the car alarm indicator feed wire to this. If your motorcycle does not have a hazard switch, then get a 12 volt 10 amp car relay. This relay will then give power to your indicators with a car alarm indicator feed wire activating the relay. You will then take power directly from the battery through the relay to the indicators. The only problem you have with this setup is that it now bridges your left and right side indicators. If you were to use your indicators normally the power will flow back up the wires of alarm system relay and flash both sides. The way to stop this is to use diodes on each side. You should only need to use two as the wires from the front indicators are connected to the back as well. So if you give power to the back indicators it will automatically give power to that side's front indicators. I use diodes that can handle 5 amps. This is a view of my alarm shock sensor. You can see the alarm on one side. Always use fuses when pulling power directly from the battery with a fuse as close to the battery as possible. I like the blade fuses that you can buy with a holder from most electronic or automotive shops. If you can, get the sealed ones such as the red ones shown here. Another step up or something that you can do on its own is to install a GPS tracker that works off a cell phone SIM card. Some are standalone units that are fixed with magnets and some need installation. Those running off your motorcycle's battery have an internal battery giving the unit a standby time if someone cuts the battery wires. Standalone units are like cell phones and need charging periodically. But they are good for rental motorcycles. This allows you to track your motorcycle should they steal it. Some can send you a message on your phone when the motorcycle moves even a few meters when activated and others connect with a recovery company but it costs you a monthly subscription fee. If you really want, you can put a cover over your motorcycle, lock the wheels and chain the motorcycle up, have a full alarm system with a nice flashing light, shock sensor and mercury trip switch as well as a GPS tracker. If you have all these, you probably live in South Africa like me. Thank you for watching. If you found the video informative, please like and share the video. 
Also subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so you can be notified of new videos as I release them. For more attractions in Pretoria or Johannesburg, as well as tips for visiting South Africa, see links to my guidebooks in the description. Thank you.